Well, thank you, Jan. Jan, nice to be here. And uh, thank you for coming back on. I uh, just wanted to thank a few people for their support and donations during the week. Uh, we had Julie who uh, sent her donation. We also had, uh, uh, let's see, Oscar, I think from Spain. And uh, we also had uh, another one who sent their donations during the week. Really appreciate it. There was one other one. I'm not finding it right now. Also, again, always thanks to uh, Michael, who uh, sends his support regularly, Ted, etc. Always appreciate all the help we can get here. Constance, I had spoken to you two or three weeks ago about coming on the show again. And uh, I meant to have you on a while ago again, but uh, I had to take a break from doing the show. It just, you know, all the stuff going on, it was just, I just was floored watching the public react to this covid psyop thing you can't keep up with everything right it's too much it overwhelms me from time to time yeah well you know and you expose this stuff for a decade and then you see everybody around you just fall for it hook line and sinker it was pretty tough you know mm -hmm. and then you have this uh marxist organization parading around as as rights as a rights group and uh you know so it was interesting to watch all of this play out over the last uh what five months now and i just i took a break from the show so anyway glad to have you back thank you still waiting for a copy of your book <laughs> <laughs> okay so it's, it's believe it or not i have it in a package ready to take to the post office for you <laughs> I haven't been out that much <laughs> Okay. I'm just giving you a hard time. So, uh, well, you know, today we wanted to talk about the cult of QAnon. And so, okay. uh, you know, you had said that you, and yeah, I see that cult book on your shelf behind you. You had said that you had been doing research on that and it tied to another cult that you had seen that you had written on uh, decades ago. Yes, yes. I um, in um, QAnon, I think, has substantial identity with um, a movement that I've known by the name of Manifest Son of God, the Sonship Movement, the Overcomers, and some, by some references called Neo-Pentecostals, although Neo-Pentecostals is, is kind of a broad term. But uh, the first place I discovered them was in a report called the Evolu an, uh, an Evolutionary Basis for the Reappearance of the Christ and His Executives, the Masters of Wisdom, and it was by Ernest A. Ramsey who was an associate pastor at Unity on the Plaza Church in Kansas City, Missouri, and had been uh, inspired to write the book from Benjamin Krem's appearance on their quote, Maitreya the Christ at, uh, at his church, the home church of Unity Church in Kansas City, Missouri, Unity on the Plaza Church. And he wrote about the elements that were coming together for it, including Alice Bailey, Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, uh, Donald L. Plim, PhD from Wayne State University in Detroit, where a good share of my undergraduate education took place, and uh, other names. And But the part of the report that interested me the most was called the Sonship Movement, and how they had um, they had three major centers, one in, in, Can in Springfield, Missouri, with a fellow named Bill Britton, another one in upstate New York at a location surrounded by Paul, tall pine trees, and the third one in Virginia Beach, Virginia, which he later told me was Rock Church, John and Anne Jimenez, when uh, 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 the person who originally brought me the report and I decided to track him down and query him on his statements. But I started tracking that movement, and uh, I discovered that that movement had penetrated my own office and had, they had volunteers had been sent to me after there was a major news story about my work fighting the new age movement and they um, had attached themselves to me and became almost my best friends and it was only my own disorganization that saved me from giving them a key to my office so they could keep things organized while i was gone which they wanted to do and I went uh, when I went to Kansas City and January 1983 was handed the report that I told you about by a lady who later was on the city council of one of the Kansas City suburbs. 
Uh, I was disturbed by the content of the report. I brought it back and showed it to the helper who was helping in my office. And she looked at it and frowned, said, well, let's see. She said, there are types and shadows. There are these things or this things. This, may, th this man must be counterfeiting uh, the good things of God. She said, remember, Satan never has an original idea. Satan can only counterfeit. I said, what do you mean Satan has no original ideas? He has lots of them, rape, pillage, plunder. Uh, anyway, I didn't think that much of it, and my book was released around Memorial Day, 1983, and I was sent to Florida for a week, where um, uh, among the, during the week I did an interview with a 50,000 watt Tampa area station, and the talk show um, the station manager wanted me to meet Carol Balazé, the author of a novel, end time novel called The Seven Last Years. And we drove to her house in a Tampa suburb. And she um, came out and first her demeanor was a little puzzling. She said her sister had sent my tapes, her my tapes, and she had viewed them, and she, but she recognized what I was writing about was a nice scholarly dissertation on the New Age movement, but she said what I had identified as the core teachings of a New Age were also the central teachings of the Sonship movement, the Manifest Son of God movement, and at first I thought she was troubled by it, and it turned out, it became very clear that she was an adherent of it, and we had some discussion, and she named some names, including Kelly Varner, and then she happened to mention Bill Britton. And when she said Bill Britton, I just happened to have that report with me. And I whipped it out of my briefcase and I proved to her satisfaction that Bill Britton was knowingly and consciously working with the new, rest of the New Agers for the same agenda, New World Order, New World Religion, a New Age Messiah, and the destruction of fundamentalist Christians who did not follow their agenda. And at that point, she turned rather pale, and she went upstairs and got a pamphlet called Unlimited Glory, brought it back and asked me to please read it, and said, there's some other things you need to know about this. She said, we're being taught that we're going to have a 30-year-old man come and lead us as our king. Well, I read the pamphlet that night. The heresies were frankly 10 times worse than the New Age report had described. I was shocked, and in the report, he said he had talked to the New Agers and people didn't know how evil their plans were, but what he didn't tell them was he was teaching exactly the same thing. Well, I was, I was uh, taken back and thank God Carol Balazé was an honest soul and uh, said she intended to get out of it. I have no idea. I haven't talked to her since, but uh, I flew home and I had to confide in somebody on this. And I called so I called my dear friend Phyllis, and Phyllis and Joe were the ones helping at my office and wanted the key. And I just started spilling all this out. And I finally said, Phyllis, I said, this scares me to death. If somebody of Carol Balazay's sophistication could have fallen for it, nobody is safe. And there was silence for a minute. And then she said, Constance. I said, yes. She said, I have news for you. I said, what's that? She said, Joe and I are into it too. I said, promise me you will not do one more thing with it until you come and view the materials I've collected on it. She said she would. She came over the next day. She was to pick up an autographed copy of my brand new book, just hot off the presses, which I was going to give her. And she walked in and frankly, she looked like a scene out of The Exorcist. And she said, God sent her to deliver a message to me. I was to cease and desist on my work on the New Age movement immediately. I had failed to grow. I had failed to progress. I was insisting on reading the Bible literally. And so therefore the work was being taken from me and given to others. And I said, well, I don't think God wanted that message delivered. But anyway, we started discussing what was in that book I had. And finally, I pointed to the part where they were going to be God's instruments to purge the earth of evil. They were going to usher in. They, were, they never left this planet. They were the generation that would break the bonds of death. They were the generation that would usher in God's kingdom by force and violence. And they would have the thousand year reign of peace here on earth. And, but since judgment began at the house of the Lord, they were to be God's instruments to physically exterminate those 
in the Lord's house who would not accept the latest move of the Holy Spirit, that we were gods ourselves and we were the generation that would not die. And it, and it was targeting the same enemy that the rest of the New Age movement was targeting and the same level like Barbara Marks Hubbard's The, uh, the Revelation we come to bring death. We do this for the sake of the planet. The writers of the pale horse are to pass among you. They will separate the wheat from the chaff. It was the same message. Well, anyway, I pointed that out to her and I'll never forget it. She said, this is true, Constance. She said, and you will be killed and it will be your own fault because you failed to accept the deeper truths of sonship. And she left without taking a copy of the book. And needless to say, that motivated me to look at it much, much more carefully. They had changed biblical terms. They had taken a biblical agenda. The year of Jubilee was going to be the equivalent of the age of Aquarius. The Feast of Tabernacles was going to be the coming together of the world religions under one tent, one tabernacle. And that would be the new world religion. And, they, uh, and the new Christ was all of us. I was, Jesus was the seed corn that fell into the ground, and I'm Christ, we're Christ, we're all Christ, and uh, that, um, and, and, but anyway, uh, I was, uh, I stayed on top of it, and from time to time, they made more attempts to penetrate my uh, own operation, several very hard, uh, um, they must have spent some money on some of them, the pastor of their little church turned up where I was speaking in Cincinnati wanted to go to dinner with me. And then I would do from time to time a television program. And uh, so, so whenever somebody would say to me, remember, Satan never has an original idea. Satan can only counter. But I'll tell you, I just froze. If you ran into somebody saying that, you've ran into one of them. And then uh, I spoke in Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina. So does that mean you're one since you just said it? <laughs> <laughs> no. I quoted. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing uh, anyway. you. Thanks. Keep you anyway, on, keep you on your it toes there. It was several times there would be people would actually physically show up at the doorstep here at the house and say God sent them, and then and then you start they, the slips would fall out of their face. They were at the school, the prophets. It might be things like school, the prophets, the, the new revelations. And the thing has split many denominations in half. It's a long movement. Uh, Bill Britton was one of the leaders, but it started earlier than Bill Britton. But I was looking at the QAnon materials and going through their books, and I was getting phone calls on it. And I just sat there and said, this is the same thing. Same thing. Now they've got it. And uh, they've got a, a fantasy. And, and, and the new jargon for it is that Trump is their messiah, that Trump is, is, is leading us through that actually Trump had hired um, Robert Mueller to um, investigate um, Hillary Clinton. And that that's why Clinton, uh, that's why Trump was referring to the investigation as a witch hunt because Hillary was the witch. <laughs> and, and the Pizzagate thing, all the rest of it going through it. But the bottom line was they're going to come in. They're going to take the kingdom by force and violence. They're going to have the thousand year reign. And those that don't go along with their agenda are to be dismissed from this world. But uh, anyway, it's a very frightening movement. It's, it's sucking a lot of people into it. It's, it's bigger than just the QAnon thing, which is big enough with their symbols, but it's also split whole Pentecostal denominations almost in two. So earlier, uh, before the show started, this guy, Adam, Muddy something or other, I forget his name now. It was probably a troll account. He said, well, you must, you know, you're, you're a sellout shill referring to me because obviously Jeffrey Epstein and Harvey Weinstein were arrested and convicted and put in prison. Therefore, non sequitur fallacy, uh, QAnon is correct. As if most, you know, most people from Pizzagate before QAnon even started knew about Jeffrey Epstein and and uh, Alephantis and all of this stuff going on with Pizzagate. And uh, I had done four shows on Pizzagate. The, the, the left fake news media created the fake news term to try and get us trying to 
uh, investigate the validity or not of this Pizzagate thing shut down. And then Trump came out and flipped it back on them, and that stopped them from shutting us down. So, um, you know, but these people, you know, it's it's really a bizarre sort of uh, logic when if these two people were correct and oh, and they're Jewish, so it's a Jewish conspiracy. Yes, therefore, sir. the therefore the whole thing is a Jewish conspiracy. You know, pedophilia is a Jewish conspiracy, and you know a- anybody who's read the Old Testament knows that that behavior isn't allowed. And then they'll refer to the fake Talmud quotes that I have also disproved. Right. And that they that they cite back and forth to each other, and none of them ever actually open a Talmud to verify those quotes, which I did go in and verify, and they turned out to be fakes. All but, what was it, one or three of the quotes out of like 56 that I checked ended up being totally fake. And so, but they don't read the New or the Old Testament and realize, hey, this these are the the laws or the rules that we're supposed to live by. And uh, uh, so, <clears throat> you know, all Jews are a part of this conspiracy, and they don't even define what a Jew is. You know, it's like uh, Revelations, what is it, 3, 9, 9, 3, I forget. Uh, Those who say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. So why are there people going around claiming that they are Jews who are not and do lie? It seems like a bit of blame casting to me. But, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, a whole other topic that we can get into. But, you know, a broken clock is correct twice a day. So, you know, the, if, if QAnon gets two things correct and 50 things wrong, uh, you know, there's the trolls are going off in the, uh, well, in the, in the thread here. But, uh, you know, if two things are found to be correct and 50 things found, you know, disproved or with minimal evidence to substantiate them, well, the whole thing must be true. Well, the thing is a very clever, almost cut and paste between things that they cut, they've snipped out of the scriptures out of context and then plain old New Age things. And one of their their books, their prominent books, I don't know if you've seen it or not. It's a QAnon and the thousand one thousand years of peace, and they they've got the section in there about the, the Maitreya and how this is part of maybe that's part of God's plan and God has a plan for those people just like Bill Britton. He, um, the, the themes the themes are there. They've cut and pasted many things together, and I think part of it is a clever variation on something I call a game that. Uh, Folks in those networks love to play called Watch the Fundamentalists Run. And they plant something out there that's so outrageous that if we repeat it and pass it on, and lots of simple people do, then we look like simpletons. They can laugh and say, aren't they stupid? Right. And at the same time, aren't they dangerous? They need to be shut down, which is exactly what happened with Jonestown. And I um, had the joy of helping to give Jonestown back to the New Agers. He was theirs the whole time. They knew it the whole time. He's in my old New Age directories um, as a San New Age Center, uh, his location, original location in California. And after the Kool-Aid party in Jonestown in 1978, as I recall, then suddenly if we don't shut those dangerous fundamentalists down, we're going to have lots more Jonestowns. And he was theirs the whole time. They knew it the whole time. And they, um, uh, this is this. I think this is a similar scam. And they're working on it. And they're pushing the buttons. And they're watching us. And they're watch the fundamentalists run. And big magazines like Atlantic are bringing this out and saying, "Well, conspiracy theory." And here it is, the queen of the conspiracy theories. And so. Yeah, it's like, uh, well, in the term conspiracy theory is an appeal to ridicule. And mm-hmm. I have, you know, which is designed to get you not to think, not to look at the evidence and just to dismiss exactly. it right out of hand. So if we pull up, uh, I'm just pulling up my, showing my my database on screen here. Uh, conspiracy theorist, do I have the document here? Uh, I'm just looking for 
the CIA document uh, showing that the CIA actually came up with the term conspiracy theory. Uh, oops. I'm trying to get it shown on screen here. My, my screen just pulled it out. Let me see. What the heck? Anyway, it was up. My screen is acting bizarre right now. But uh, so uh, September 1976, CIA, uh, if people want to look this up, you can pull this up out of the CIA archives. They actually admit that they created the term conspiracy theory, actually term created in 1967 to discredit anyone questioning the Warren Commission report on the JFK assassination. And ironically, uh, JFK was assassinated the same day that Aldous Huxley died or was overdosed or whatever you want to call it by his wife, uh, was it Laura Huxley? But of course, Aldous Huxley was running the whole MK Ultra program, founded the Esalen Institute to spread all of this new age crap. What do you have to say? You're look deep in thought there. Well, I, I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing with you. This is the, um, uh... And, and there have been people that, some that oppose themselves as, um, as warriors for truth that have did some bragging that they were actually doing things and setting things up for the CIA. And I'm thinking about one, uh, one name that came to light, which was originally a shocker to me, but not afterwards. Patrick Matriciano and his wife, Carol, is a dear friend of mine. She did some very good work. They did some work together. There was an ugly divorce. I think they're both dead now. But... Uh, they um, and he had did some bragging that he'd set some of this stuff up the uh, the Jesus helped set the Jesus movement up for the CIA. <laughs> well, uh, I've done four or five shows with Steve Jones. I don't know if he's listening tonight. He's a big fan of yours. He said he would tune in tonight, but uh, he's got your book or books, and uh, he's been he and I have been exposing on the show this whole you know. Uh, misdirection of christianity that's gone on since about the mid 60s this is uh, could i share something before we move on on the sure. Q &A thing yeah uh, because when i tell people it's some of its new age cut and paste uh chapter two of this book uh q and on and 1000 years of peace i think it's their second edition of the book is chapter two is everyone's waiting on a messiah and this thing opens almost as a cut and paste from the Benjamin Krem um, Maitreya, the Christ ad that appeared in the New York Times and Los Angeles Times and ma many major papers of the world full page on April 25th, 1982. And uh, this is just, if I could just read briefly this, it said, said, you probably know that Christians worldwide have been anticipating the imminent return of Christ most biblical scholars believe this based on the prophecies in books like Daniel and from the very words of Christ himself. And what's really a quote coincidence unquote is that those who follow Judaism are awaiting their Messiah and Christians are awaiting on our Messiah. True Muslims are awaiting their Mahdi. Hindus are awaiting their Krishna and Buddhists are waiting on Maitreya. And they all expect him to bring peace on earth between all people. What a coincidence, but maybe it's not a coincidence. Maybe Christ will guide each one of these groups into the truth, removing the deception, dot, to dot, to dot. And so they, they, they bring that and they throw that st stuff into the mix. And then they throw the Jews as enemies into the mix. And they, um, uh, and that they, they maybe they're the true Jews and the Jews aren't the true Jews and so on and so forth. It's it's just a, it's just a mishmash and a cut and paste uh, 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 among them other th and other things. But their bottom line is they're going to take this, they're going to usher in this kingdom by force and violence. And I'm afraid that what it may do is give just give a Jim Dandy excuse to the to to powers that be. Uh, this there's, there's no way this group's going to outshoot the United States military or any other military. But they think they're going to have the power to go in and take it by force and violence. I'm told that already a QAnon supporter killed eight people in Germany in a mass murder in Germany. And who knows how many other loose cannons are out there inspired by this stuff. 
and that it might be a good jan a jolly good excuse to come shut the rest of us down saying that this represents us when actually it was something artificially um, contrived to fit another agenda so and i asked the uh the chat group if uh they have a list of things that QAnon got correct. And I'm not seeing anything yet. I would think that they could have a, a would have a ready list of things that that QAnon got correct. Um, do you know what what can you say about the things that QAnon did get correct and uh uh and how does that play out? Is that like, you know, the clock is, a broken clock is correct twice a day type of thing? Well, I don't know if that much was correct. I'm looking at their main points in this book, which kind of purports to be objective, but it's not. It's a QAnon book itself, a pro QAnon book, QAnon the Storm. I don't know if you're, it can, well, is that showing up on your screen? Yes. Okay, and in the back, he has a section on, um, and then came QAnon. It said QAnon is a quote conspiracy theory, which began with an October 2017 post on the anonymous internet. Now I think it's much older than that because I recognize their their foundations. But it said the storm made by someone using the handle Q, and then the poster who later moved to 8chan claims to represent military intelligence with access to highly classified information involving the Trump administration and its enemies in the international cabal. And then, um, and they had their, their what they, they said the, um, what was going on, their conspiracy theory said is known as the storm after Trump's cryptic reference to a coming storm in the great awakening. And there's a scene, there's a picture here can you hold it up a little higher, please? Okay. And the picture is something that I watched on another video Saturday night. It said Trump made it a point to surround himself with military re uh, leaders and tease the media with talk about a coming, quote, storm, unquote. Soon afterwards, QAnon began his amazingly prophetic posts. And, and, and what was said on that video is posted in here said, you guys know what this represents, inaudible, maybe it's the calm before the storm. And of course, there was speculation on what they meant, what he meant by the storm. And anyway, what they said, the, 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 the cabal never expected Hillary to lose. Well, Hillary did lose, so I guess they got that part right. And they said the storm is actually a military coup, which recruited Trump to lead the political and legal aspects of what is to be the greatest sting operation. Now that that's pretty far out. Now, and Robert, let me, Robert Mueller. Go ahead. Robert Mueller, an ex-Marine, actually works for the White Hats. And, of course, they're the White Hats, Trump's the White Hats, while pretending to oppose Trump. And that the NSA has all the evidence needed to take down the cabal. And that GF, JFK Sr. and JFK Jr. were murdered by the cabal. Well, um, that's that's possibly true. Although, you know, I've researched a lot into uh, the JFK assassination, and that ties very heavily into the whole uh, nexus of MK Ultra and all. Uh, right. So, and then the, they said the Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia was murdered by the cabal. And then that the evidence needs to be cleaned, uh, slowly introduced under the cover of other investigations so it is no longer unactionable evidence. And uh, they, um, they go through, it goes through a number of things that Attorney General Jeff Sessions only pretended to be weak and incompetent. This allowed him to clean out traitors in the FBI and Department of Justice. And Hillary and, and daughter Chelsea are into Satanism and witchcraft. Well, I could believe part of that of Hillary. But well, yeah. So let me let me read is. some of these comments in the uh, in the uh, in the chat here. So Angie says Q is not a prophet. You didn't say Q is the prophet. You said they think Trump was the prophet. Is I think is what you they said. Think Trump's going to be there. Trump right. is, their, is their leader. Right, and it has many purposes. It sure would help. 
if people like uh, if people like that to put it down would actually follow Q and not posers. Um, let's see. That'll be the day. And then it says you really have no idea what you're talking about, and I hate so much right now how you're talking to people. Um, yeah. let's see. That's par for the course when you're coming. This against- this guy. Aquila cannot stay on topic. For some reason, he thinks this is a debate about Logos and Christianity versus his pagan religion, and it doesn't appear that he's ever read the New Testament. But uh, none thinks Trump or Q are are prophets. And then, uh, you know, it's a Q has said disinfo is necessary. They're not the prophet Trump 2020. I'm just, you know, I thought it would be interesting to see what some of these people are saying in the chat here. You know, a lot of people, you know, I asked for specific... Basically, I, I think they're saying I, Trump I, is God's instrument, and he's, he's the leading this revelation, and Trump's going to lead us into the thousand-year Reich that they want. Now, I asked a while back uh, for specific things that Q proved correct, and I just asked for a simple list, and not no one has, has provided anything yet. So it would be nice if people show us, you know, see, here's the thing is sending, you know, putting out blurbs and then having people go research. That's fine. I mean, you know, uh, it's a good idea to research and learn things, but you don't put out things that are so ambiguous that they can be taken, you know, any which direction. It's like, uh, Oh, what's the stuff uh, from uh, uh, adrenochrome? You know, I've done a lot of work on adrenochrome over the years, and uh, that's... You just introduced something new to me. What is adrenochrome? Oh, I don't know if you really want to know. So, well, basically, you know, the Bible says that the blood is the life, and okay. what what people do, you know, you're, you're never supposed to drink the blood of the animal that you are killing, and so right. what these people do... Well, it goes even further, but they're, they're, they're drinking the blood, but it goes even further than that. What they do is, the theory is, is that you cause adrenaline in people by stabbing them, and children stabbing them, making small cuts in them, and then drinking their blood and or full-on vampirism. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So right out of Leviticus, the life is in the blood. Okay. Right. So you know there. You know I'm sure there is truth to this stuff. Uh, Dr. Abram Hoffer, Dr. Humphrey Osmond, uh, of course Aldous Huxley, uh, Dr. R. Heacock, Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, they were all into this stuff. It. You know Al Hubbard. Uh, all of these guys were uh, MK Ultra. They were all. Uh, behind this stuff, I have it also tied to uh, the Pizzagate thing uh, in uh, uh, in the in my database here. Mm-hmm. Dr. John Smythes is another one, and they were all tied to uh, MK Ultra directly through Aldous Huxley and and his his specific group. But you know, I don't have any doubt that that stuff is actually going on. You know, some people say that Hillary has Kuru or you know, George Soros and whatnot, maybe they do. And, uh, but, so, <laughs> you know, the, the, the belief is is that these people stay young by drinking young children's blood, and then the, the adrenochrome actually gets them high, sort of like mescaline, when they drink the children's blood. Mm. I'm glad that was your area of research and I didn't have to go into it. Well, yeah, it wasn't fun for me to go through either. No, I don't think so. <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, I'm, I still, let's see, he says, uh, Psychata 3301 was literally a blueprint for QAnon. I don't see them posting anything of what QAnon got right in the research or in the leads or anything she's coming in uh, coming in on cue but doesn't know what adrenochrome is well she's an expert on cults not everything q and she is showing how QAnon is directly related to the what's the cult called again the manifest son of god movement 
So research the Manifest Son of God movement and find out. They can, they can do a quick uh, study, a quick sure. read on it. Sure, let's they do that. download for free my book on the internet. Uh, you can download it at archive.org, the, the planned deception. And in the chapter I called A Secret Kingdom, I have an extensive several pages on the Manifest Son of God movement. So QAnon, Pizzagate, Psychata are all hoaxes and LARPs. That's a very strong possibility, too. You know, it's like that uh, woman I interviewed her a few years ago, Fiona Barnett from uh, Australia. She, she, puts these, she puts everybody on this wild goose chase for evil Nazi pedophiles. And, you know, when I interviewed her, the, the interview was a complete joke. I didn't even release it for two years, mm -hmm. and I put... You know, I turned it into a pop-up fallacies video when I finally released it. But she sends people on a wild goose chase for dead Nazis rather than focusing on real pedophiles and real pedophilia going on today. You know, mm -hmm. so everybody that she supposedly exposed uh, subsequently was also already dead. Now, when I was researching this and following the movements and the speakers on this, an interesting thing I discovered was that some of the folks putting this out are also relying heavily on some other books that claim to be about some of the MK Ultra stuff. But some of the sources I thought, again, were some Watch the Fundamentalist Run store of the stuff. There was a Kathy, just blanked on her last name, and a Mark Phillips, who was her protector. And they had, um, uh, she had everything like the vice president, um, the former vice president under, under uh, George Bush, uh, Bush the younger, uh, was a rapist and Reagan was a rapist. And they, and the, but the churches are up there repeating some of this nonsense and passing it on like it's gospel. And again, it just sets, sets us up for ridicule and not being taken seriously. And right. also for shutting us down. Right, exactly. Well, yeah, and that's, I think, the exact point of what uh, Fiona Barnett was, was doing. Let me see if I have her in the database here. <clears throat> I'm sure I do. My database got flipped around trying to expand the window here somehow. Yeah, <clears throat> Kate Gardner is her real name, or Gardiner or Gardner. And, you know, there's, boy, you know, when I didn't release my interview with her right away, she started doing all kinds of hit pieces on me and whatnot. But, yeah, there's this huge psyop out there. She's working with this guy, Alfred, or was working with this guy, Alfred Lamont Weber, who is part of the New York City Environmental Project, Yale Law School. Uh, he, so in 2011, I gave a presentation at the Free Your Mind Conference in uh, Pennsylvania, and this guy, Alfred Lamont Weber, was there, total disinfo guy, and his lecture was about how microscopic UFOs fly into our atmosphere, fly over the ocean, expand into gigantic full-size spaceships, scoop up our water, shrink down into microscopic little things again, and fly off. You know, and it was just, you know, and there was actually, and the irony of this thing being called the Free Your Mind Con uh, Conference, it was the Enslave Your Mind Conference. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, 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 most of the presenters were presenting complete hyperbole and stuff that right. couldn't be fact checked. So then anybody who goes and repeats any of this stuff is, of course, looked like a nut. But this guy, right. you know, like I said, went to Yale, worked for uh, New York City, uh, he, and ironically, Stanford Research Institute. So there's always. What was his, what was his name? Uh, Alfred Lamont Weber, and he's a JD. Okay. So okay. He, he's a Juris um, same Doctor. Same degree I have. Okay. Juris, juris Doctor. Okay. Oh, so I should have put Doctor in front of your name for the show then, huh? <laughs> if you're, you're not supposed to do that if you're practicing actively, but if you cease practicing actively, then I can call myself Doctor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So, by the way, the book I was thinking of before, the author of the, some of the books of the, the stories that I thought were pretty wild was a Kathy O'Brien with a yeah, Phillip. yeah. Mark somebody Mark just Mark mentioned Mark. her in the chat too. Uh, where did that comment go? I, I, sorry, I missed it. But yeah. So, what did you have to say about her? Well, I am. I'm very. I'm. I'm highly questioning 
uh, what was in her books and how accurate it was and what she might have been under some kind of mind control, I don't know. But some of the things that she's alleged uh, to me sound frankly like pure fantasy, utterly unprovable and something to set us up for ridicule. But I'm watching um, some of these fundamentalist churches uh, with they they have you can pull them down on YouTube and they have their cute kids are reading the start things from so Song of Solomon before they start and then they're going through and explaining this with all gravity how Reagan was a rapist and President Ronald Reagan how all these other high figures were and that Bob Hope was and and it's it's wild I and and I I doubt if it's provable and but it's it's um, it, it's being fed into this this mix and also fed into this mix is something I've discovered these red pill conferences and they keep speaking in the QAnon circles about taking the red pill. Well, that's from the uh, Matrix film, right? Did you ever watch the Matrix back in the late 90s? I fell asleep through several times trying to watch <laughs> it. On Interesting. So, uh, the yeah, bill conferences are being held, but a lot of the folks in QAnon are uh, showing up in our speakers sometimes at some of these red pill conferences. In fact, I think they've got there's I think this year is might be a virtual one, but they've got a big one coming up, I guess, for 2021. So uh, thank you, Brian. And also thank you, uh, Dell, for the uh, super chats. Much appreciated. Um, yeah. You know, so. Yeah. And then. uh you know, there's all of this stuff. There's all of these accusations, and I've asked what two, three times now for a list of things that QAnon got correct, and nobody's. Oh, okay. Well, okay. No, nobody's provided anything yet. I'm still waiting, and there's a bunch of pro QAnon people in the chat. I would think that they would at least provide, you know, a few things uh, that we could, you know, go with, but. Uh, faceless voices on the internet should not be bothered with, you know, that's what Brian says. I found one place that was when I was doing some searching on it. And one of the first things that uh, it came up and it was a video from a white dove ministry, I believe in Georgia. Now the QAnon a supporter that Trump has endorsed Miss Green is from Georgia also. And, uh, and that's a Georgia was big, rich territory for the manifest son of God movement also. But uh, they, um, uh, they, they're quite. Uh, they're, they have the power of God themselves. They have the this power, and they're going to take it by force and violence. And Trump was God's chosen instrument to help usher it in. So uh, Mario says the prediction of McCain's death. I'm wondering if the big tumor growing out the side of his neck was a giveaway on that one. Oh, that that was one of their other more exotic teachings is that McCain was actually executed. Interesting. That's in the that's in this little book that I held up that um, that uh, Cain so, was. Uh, McCain was was executed, which is that, that's nonsense too. And I mean, you 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 pass it on with a straight face, and there's lots of grounds to shoot you down. Mario, he had no tumor. So what was the big thing on his neck? Was that a tumor? I thought he had brain cancer. But, uh... Uh, let's see here. Just about. Glioblastoma and John McCain's cancer. Okay, so it was glioblastoma and cancer. So so much for that one. So uh, I was hoping that somebody would give us, you know, a, a real list. K. Griggs is worth a listen if you. You know what? I've tried to listen through K. Griggs talks, and having done years and years of research on this stuff. I think I tried to watch her four-hour presentation maybe four times, and I fell asleep through it each time. Mm -hmm. Sanchez the Manchez. They also believe Hillary's been arrested and replaced with a clone or body double. Okay. I don't know if 
Is that Snatches? Who's that's uh, that's in this. That's in that's one of the premises in this book. The storm is the one of the things that they teach. And what's interesting is he tries to make it look like he's reporting about it. But he obviously is a proponent himself, but he's trying to be subtle and and they make it go either way. So if all falls through, then he might say, "Gee, I was trying to warn you about it." Well, <clears throat> you know, here's the thing with research, and I'm sure that people helping QAnon have found valid things. I'm not knocking everybody. I'm not knocking valid discoveries. But there is a process for doing valid research. It starts off with who, what, where, when. Then you go to why. Then you explain how you got your conclusions. And, you know, you process out the logical fallacies. You look for contradictions in the information. A contradiction is always a lie or an error. There are no contradictions in nature ever, period, full stop. And so when, and so when you go through this process, you know, verify citations all the way down to the primaries. Don't accept third-hand secondary citations. Get all the way down to the primaries. Here's you know. the here is the the page the passage where it said McCain was executed. It said John McCain um, faked cancer at a at a failed attempt to escape justice. He was later executed by the military for high treason so that he could not be there to stop Trump's Supreme Court nominee, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, from being nominated. Now, that's just pure nonsense. I mean, I I was told that uh, reporters years ago, that reporters for the National Enquirer is a reformed one who had repented of his involvement in it and told Joe Carr, a, a prominent author, and I, telling some stories about what was going on. He said they'd sit at a bar, they'd drink, and then they'd come up with these headlines and they'd just howl. And how funny they were and that people were buying them. And I think some of this is the stuff on Q is the same thing. They, they've just thrown these things into the mix and let's see who buys it. Well, you know, so years ago I was on a flight back from Princeton University doing research at the MUD and the Firestone Libraries on the Huxleys and a bunch of other stuff I was pulling mm -hmm. up at the time. Right. And uh, I'm flying back, and there's this guy next to me from China, and I'm organizing all the photos of all of the documents I pulled out of the mud library. Mm -hmm. I had like a thousand photos I had taken. And the, the Chinese guy next to me says, you know, the nice thing about China is when you're censored, you know you're being censored. You know, because if you write a book, you know, the the Marxist, communist, you know, book publisher guy says, you have to change this because blah, 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 and you know it's censored just straight up. And then it occurred to me, oh, but that's because the, the West, the U.S., uses a free market of ideas to flood everything with nonsense and confusion and, and hyperbole so that there are right. so many misdirections, so many contradictions that people just throw their hands up and they give up. Exactly. So, you know... Is, is, As they win tails, they win, huh? Yep, exactly. So by the time you filter through all of the contradictions and the information and pull all of the fallacies out and get down to the truth, you know, it's you've spent so much time because the sea of disinformation is so deep. You know, so most people don't even want to bother trying to wade through it all you know it's just like on mk ultra and aldous huxley and stuff it took me years of research and digging through and going to princeton and going to different places and calling up university archives and spending a bunch of money to get this stuff sent to me to get to the bottom of his involvement in mk ultra and tim leary and the esalen institute and sri and all of these you know people behind it so uh, what else can you tell us about QAnon and, and the ties? Well, I've, the, the fact that it's been that uh, the president hasn't, I wish, I'm disappointed that he endorsed the lady from uh, uh, Georgia who openly ran as a QAnon supporter. Really? Yes. And I, I think her last name was Green. And she's, they said she's certain to be elected to Congress because she's from a, a district that always has voted Republican, heavily Republican, and she won the Republican primary. So that tells me they're, they're gaining an influence and strength, and there's lots of them out there. 
And my big fear is, is that um, what happened in Germany is one of them. And also the fact that they, they, there's this belief in running all through the new age and all through the manifest son of God movement and the other, that there's God's going to send some kind of a signal. And on that signal, they're going to unite. And who knows what kind of triggers have been planted out there that these folks might act on, unite on. Uh, if one has one already went crazy in Germany and killed eight people, and who knows what what else is lurking out there? There was a um, Russian Orthodox priest. He was not always a Russian Orthodox priest. He became it as a convert. Father is that the is that the one that ran the little Orthodox church in uh, in uh, Woodstock, California. New York? Oh, in California. I don't know. This one was in California. Okay, and. Um, uh, and he, I think I have a, I think, wait a minute, I think his book is lurking here on the shelf behind me. I think this is it, yes, Orthodoxy and the Religion of the Future. Hold it up a little higher, please. Okay. And this was a very important book. Somebody sent it to me, and, and quite frankly, as I wrote the publisher, I said reading it was like drinking pure water after wading through muck. But he had some, he had a very, very important statement there about the danger that was going on and what this meant. And see if I can lay my. While, while you're looking for that, Steve Jones, uh, thanks for uh, watching today. I'm glad you made it. So he's here watching and he's a regular oh, guest well, of the show, too. Hello to Steve Jones. <laughs> there you go, Steve. <laughs> okay. Now you got a direct uh, direct hello from uh, uh, your somebody that you uh, an author you like. There you go. <laughs> I'm gonna. I've got to. Let me. I'll pull. Look at looking to pull this up. Mario says, "I don't think Constance has ever read Q. She's not qualified to make these statements." Uh, Mario, would you please give me a list of things that Q has gotten right? I, I'm I asking four of you. Their major books, so was, you, you have four of the major books. Four of their major books, so yeah. Oh yes, I've got enough. To, yeah, I, I've read enough. I've read enough. Um, somebody said it was. He said, um, "Thanks, I can smell it through here. From here, I don't have to walk through it to know what it is." But anyway, I won't. So um, here, here's uh, says so Jammer Funk says Pooanon. I, I like the name. Is the same as my jumper matters, but to distract Trump supporters instead of the demon crazies. Okay, now let me. Well, she's read a lot of uh, quotes from Q. She read, they're, they're complaining that you read books about Q, but you haven't read the QAnon They post. were books from, from proponents of Q. They were Q's books, not books about Q. I would love to have a book about Q. The one, the one little one I have that kind of looks like it's about Q, QAnon, The Storm, 120-year timeline by Robert S. Smith, is obviously from a proponent, not an opponent of Q. Okay. The other books, the uh, QAnon and the Coming Storm and the Thousand Year, the the year Thousand Years of Peace with QAnon, those are QAnon books. So um, Mario still has not Here we, posted um, anything. So Mario, please show us some evidence of what QAnon got right. I know there's. Uh, cognitive dissonance but the onus of proof falls on you to show us evidence of things that q got correct and you know sh i'm sure that he got some things right i mean you can't have everything wrong period but Even i'm just broken clock is right twice a day right i'm just asking for evidence of what those things were and if you don't meet the onus of proof then you're arguing the arbitrary and we have to dismiss your argument by default uh, Mario says, I'll be glad to come back next week and give you examples going through Q posts is heavy reading. So you, d you don't have ready examples. I mean, I, I did read a lot of Q back in the early days. And I saw so much 
fallacious word salad I gave up trying to go through it myself. I've seen some things come through that may be valid or maybe not be valid. I just couldn't, you know, find a logical footing in it to make it worth my while. Um, but don't take personal offense. We're not attacking you personally. We're just asking you to present examples. But if it ends up being false, I recommend you drop it. I've got, I've got the paragraph I was looking for Great. in Father Seraphim Rose's book. He said, it is all too likely that Jonestown is but the beginning of far worse things to come. In the 1980s, things which only those with the profoundest and clearest Christian faith can even dare think about. It is not merely that politics is becoming religious, for the massacres in Cambodia were acts performed with, quote, religious, that is, demonic fervor, or, the, or that religion is becoming political, in the case of Jonestown, such things have happened before. But it may well be that we are now beginning to see in concrete historical acts the particular blending of religion and politics that seems to be required for the zealots of the anti of Antichrist, the religious political leader of the last humanity. The spirit, to be sure, has already been present to some degree in the earlier totalitarian regimes of the 20th century. But the intensity of fervor and devotion required for mass suicide, as opposed to mass murder, which has been committed many times in our century, makes Jonestown a milestone in the path to the approaching culmination of modern times. Satan, it would seem, is now entering naked into human history. The years ahead just ahead promised to be more terrible than anyone can now easily conceive. This one outburst of satanic inspired energy led nearly 1,000 people to revolutionary suicide. Uh, what of the many other enclaves of satanic energy, some much more powerful than this small movement that have not yet manifested themselves. And that is my concern. This, well, this movement has this blending of politics and religion. And, and 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 inspiring people this this act of fervor, and you, you you've got people on the edges that can be easily pushed over anyway. But when you can have some mass calls, such as happened in Rwanda, yeah. when at a at a signal they united. Right. Uh, Marilyn Ferguson, when she wrote about what they were expecting would happen one day, that there would be a voice that would unite, and on that signal they would unite. Barbara Marcus Hubbard wrote about this thing that when they the, the day came they would unite, and I, I mean Jesus said, "No man knoweth the day nor the hour," and that uh, if even well Lucifer doesn't know it either, but he certainly likes to have troops in reserve, and this uh, I think that this is this is a big effort to. Like heads they win, tails they win, push us over the age, make us laughing stock, make us uh, targets for civil action, make us uh, targets for shut being shut down for misinformation and disinformation, paint us all with a big brush when actually this is a movement that I think has clearly features of cut and paste uh, with folks who knew the new age agenda and who knew enough about the Bible to throw these elements in and to inspire people to these acts of hatred that the target groups of the New Age were Jews, Christians, and Muslims. And the strategy was to pit us all off against each other. And then we would fight each other to the death. And then they would be the victors to come in and restore the world from our ashes. Right. I think that and that's, that's and well, and, and that's, that's, uh, what's the, the Phoenix? Well, no, there, what's the other one? Uh, uh, Pandora, Pandora, uh, Gaia, mm -hmm. Gaia burns the world yeah. down. Oh and, yes, Gaia is there. Right, and, goddess, and, and yes. then you know, and then of course you have all these Gaia goddess cults, which means literally just destroy the world's population, and then uh, reseed it. So right, um, you know, there are a lot of interesting comments toward the end here. People are really picking up, and and so Mario is going to try to find some good stuff. He said he'll try to find it next week. I was hoping someone would provide something that they could give us during the show tonight and then it says uh, Jan biggest loss of Q followers was in the two, eight, 2018 election Q said was uh, protected then it said would be used to expose vo vote fraud fail and then mm -hmm. uh, uh, first they had that one wrong too they were going to have a great victory in 2018 right not a single federal official has been charged with verifiable treason not a single player in operation crossfire hurricane or spygate against Trump blah 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 uh, by the way, hi, everybody in the chat who's saying hello. I can't say hi to everybody all at once. Um, 
Uh, see, Mario says, many of these books are written to discredit Q. I'm not sure if Q needs any help. If you listen to what Constance is saying, it ties into these cults that we discussed at the beginning of the show and throughout. So mm -hmm. just be careful, Mario. I know it, it could be cognitive dissonance. I'm willing to be proved wrong if you have evidence for us. But uh, the onus of proof is on you for that. So just keep uh, that in mind. Why don't I give you the the, call, the titles, the, the, the four titles that I have of the books that are obviously sure. QAnon books and, and promoted by QAnon. The first one, the QAnon, The Storm by Robert S. Smith. And then uh, QAnon and the Battle of Armageddon. And that's another one that's just very, very shocking material to me. And uh, they're kind of uh, anonymous also. Um, I don't even know if it's if it, if it states who an author is here. Let me... And then it's and then Tony Baloney is saying these damn books are not Q. Well, this one this one is obviously a Q book and ref and uh, it obviously is a Q book, and um, Q and on and the Battle of Armageddon, and Q and on and one thousand years of peace. So here's a here, new world order and taking the kingdom of Christ by force. So by Robert Robert here's the name here's the name of an author by Red Pill the World Freedom Force Battalion. Yes. <laughs> they're wow. trying to be quite, so, quite anonymous themselves. Q and on they they're trying to be quite anonymous and right. Q and on and the and that's Lincoln. always that's always a red flag when you can't and, figure out who you know and who the someone author here is. Purportedly, I don't know anything about it. Is a Michael Knight and a Martin Geddes. M and uh, I don't know anything about either one of them. So Mario says uh, QAnon are tens of thousands of Q followers who help decode for us less capable of getting the clues. Well, if you need, you know, that much evidence for the clues or if you need to decode something, you know, that to me, you know, it's it's ambiguous. Why not go out? Why not say here's the evidence well, they and, have their website, which I went to and found, and and they have their, uh, uh, they have a Q, I think it's QAnon.pub or something like that, and they Q, have a lot Q -map of QMap.pub, I think, direct QMap. Yeah, QMap.pub. They, uh, I, I did save their what I could find, and and did a PDF printing to my system here, QAnon, but they. Um, I think it's a very, very dangerous group, and I, I, I guess one of my fears too was that they might be branded. Somebody might accuse me of starting Q. They already accused me of being a major factor in Brexit. I said I wasn't. Brexit was kind of funny, but I wasn't going to take Q on my back, Q and on on my back. Well, Thoughtgum says what's amazing is the Q psyop is working, whether people people believe it's true or not. Good point. Yeah. So. Well, we can go for a few minutes here, if uh, a few minutes more here, if you want. We're about two minutes over the hour. Okay, it's your show. <laughs> do you want to keep going, yeah. or do you want to, or should we wrap it up here? Whichever you want to do. <laughs> uh, oh, you're not helping me there. So, we're, did you have stuff you wanted to read about uh, QAnon? Well, they, there's a wealth of things on the internet, but uh, the one of the most telling things to me are some of the videos, and they. Um, um, there's one I said it was White Dove Ministries, and I've tried watching it. I've watched it several times, and I've tried to save it. I can save almost anything to my desk with a disc with real video. But this one, they've got it fixed up. You just cannot see them. Every you put it in there, they just can't find it at the address that's up there to save it. But go on and watch it and watch the statements that he's made. They're astounding. Yeah. So Mario says Q has many times been attacked. He was forced. It's illegal to divulge the truth directly. So here's the issue with that statement, Mario. Whoever puts the evidence out, the onus of proof or the evidence is on them to provide it. If they don't provide that evidence, it's known as arguing the arbitrary and you dismiss it by default. So if the evidence is all encoded and you got to you need 10,000 people to decode it and figure out what's being said. Mm -hmm. You don't even know if that's what, what, you know, if that's really what was being said. I've got their page here. They're um, what I was able to save to disk. I don't know how many pages it worked out to be. I mean, I'll tell you in a second what it, and um, 
it was a, their web page and it was dated as of September 8th, 2020. And they're, um, it really, there's not a lot. There's, they put a lot of things there, of like this one was arrested for this and that one was arrested for that, but how tying it in and, and how they tie the rest of it in. Um, how many pages did that be? Let me see if I can open it. Well, only 13 pages, and obviously there must be much more at that site than that, but when I tried to download it, that's all I was able to print to disk. But they've um, they've got a website up at qanon.pub.messages. Mario is accusing you of never of of having reading four of their books, but never went to the site itself. But you're on right now, aren't you? Oh yeah, I went to the site. Sure, I did. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about the site right now. So Mario, yeah. that was a false statement. Be careful with lying. So, uh, yeah, thanks, everyone, uh, Mario, or uh, ThoughtGum, thank you, and uh, uh, thanks, everyone, in the chat. I think here's probably a good place to wrap it up. Um, I think if people get what's – your, what's your book called, the one that you're going to send me, I hope? The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow, the New Age Movement and Our Coming Age of Barbarism, which now is looking like our present age of barbarism. <laughs> it's out in the streets of Portland and Seattle and – and everywhere else about every night. Yep. So uh, we can see these, you know, the effects of this, but I recommend uh, downloading your, your book for free. And I believe I did put uh, the link to your book in the, right. in, yeah, yeah, it's, I, it's I, in I, the, I, it's in the show notes right underneath here on YouTube or any yeah. place else it, it posted. So uh, uh, I just you, discovered there was a Greek edition and there is also, there's a, there's a, there's a Dutch edition that I think is still circulating and a German edition and a Norwegian edition and probably other editions I don't know about. I just discovered the Greek. So, and, and unauthorized versions that you were never paid for on top of right. that. And so. there's a published edition in the works. There's a published translation being prepared now. So, well, don't you just love it when publishers do that stuff? And then they obviously kept it secret so they didn't have to give you a cut. So they kept the money. <laughs> they sure did. Okay. Good grief. Stealing oh, well. stealing from little old ladies, isn't well, that? Well, I wasn't in it for the money anyway. <laughs> I, I could practice law as a backup, but <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Constance. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for the uh, uh, super chats. Uh, Logosmedia.com. Please hit the uh, like and subscribe and, uh, you know, uh, go to uh, – you can uh, also support the show at the Patreon link and the Log Logos Media PayPal link, et cetera, dollar sign at logosmedia.com for – oh, uh, oh shoot, what's that thing called? Cash, Cash App. And then there's a Bitcoin thing there too if you prefer that. Thank you all for your support and for tuning in. Thank you, Constance, and everybody, good night. Thank you, John.